Hey everyone, it's Jay here. Welcome to our stock video. We're going to take a look at First Republic Bank, FRC. This is the first one that comes into focus after Monday close to report earnings. So this is going to give insight into, uh, uh, as the Wall Street Journal has uh, put out their article to say, how deep the uh, banking crisis was. A lot of this happened back in March, just hasn't really been much follow up after that. And as I mentioned in my previous videos, uh, the Fed has gone back to uh, tightening. They created temporary credit facilities to help out the banks. And as Yellen and uh, Jerome Powell talked about importantly, and the Fed mentioning that the contagion, right, if one fails, uh, others may fall. So when this started, when the fall started with Silicon Valley Bank, uh, that's when you kind of saw the uh, dominoes fall and uh, additional um, stability in banks really got called into question. But ultimately, now the Fed has gone back to their tightening cycle. Uh, a lot of these pressures seem to have faded away. Now the question that we try to look at in this video is um, what's next and are the shorts in trouble? So when we look at the short volume here, let's take a look at Fintel here. Uh, we got about 54 million shares short currently on FRC with 2.18 days to cover. Uh, short interest at the flow is 59%. Uh, off exchange dark pools 57% uh, currently. So we'll see how this changes tomorrow ahead of earnings and after earnings. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do smash the like, follow and subscribe this way you don't miss any updates on FRC or any other stocks that I mentioned here uh, on the uh, on the channel. So this is going to be uh, key here to uh, look at the volume here. Once pre-market opens up uh, ahead of earnings, usually before earnings, there's an earnings run up. So we'll see if we're at 14, if we try to move towards that 15 number. A lot of people are calling for uh, 18 to 19 here, possibly as a first step up. Uh, if uh, positive earnings and things are not as bad as doom and gloom as they first appear to be. So we will see how that plays out. As always, leave me your thoughts and comments as uh, in the in the comment section as well about what you guys think, uh, we do have a uh, you know just a baby gap down here on the uh, futures which have opened. Uh, SPX is right around um, uh, S and P five hundred futures is right around that forty one twenty six mark here. So no big changes yet, uh, but I am concerned that the uh, futures tend seem to be losing footing on the uh, moving averages here. If this turns into resistance and gets a further knockdown, that could put some pressure here on the market. Uh, we'll see how things play out. And uh, as you guys can see, it's been very toppy, toppish in the market on the hourly chart here. And uh, moving averages is quite telling. We'll see if it's able to hold here, go sideways uh, ahead of big tech earnings through Tuesday and Thursday, uh, which I'll get more coverage on throughout, um, uh, throughout the week here. So I'm expecting a lot more volume to show up pre-market and definitely after hours when uh, when earnings are uh, reported as well and try to get uh, an updated video once we get the uh, firm numbers here. So back in March, I'm going to take a look at uh, some of the story here back in March because that's when a lot of the things happen. Um, the first thing you're really going to... Uh, you're going to uh, wonder about is what did analysts actually think of First Republic uh, before all this happened, right? I mean, something must have been go going positive for it because the bank was actually uh, making a nice run up before uh, before crashing down here. You can see uh, there was some really nice positive movement here on the chart. Uh, there was a there's a big move to the uh, to the upside here. So uh, just gonna get the uh, get the right chart here. Yeah, so there was a nice move here from the 120s up to the 150s. That means people were buying. You can see the RSI took off from the 50-hour uh, side break. It was mired in the downtrend. And then uh, this is what I always talk about in my technical analysis videos. You get the 50-hour side as support and then boom, takes off, right? Uh, kind of peaks at 150 and then you have to fall out. And now it's trading at one-tenth the price uh, with people thinking that, uh, you know, is this going to... Uh, going for uh, bankruptcy, like Silicon Valley, Chapter 11, uh, whatnot. And, uh, you know, it's just been trying to stop the bleeding ever since. So here, if things are not as quiet as bad as what everyone thinks it is, those 54 million shorts could be in some real trouble, right? You could see a nice short squeeze to the upside. Not saying we recover everything all in one shot it's going to be a process you can see the whole crash here took quite a few days i'm on the daily chart here where each candlestick represents one day's worth of trading time coming down to the bottom and then settling around the current price so you know that 18 19 mark closed at 20 being the round number and the psychological level of resistance that seems like a nice goal and then we'll see if it's able to work its way back to the 30s uh the run up 
could be very, very nice here. So before the um, uh, Silicon Valley collapse, analysts at Bloomberg actually saw FRC as potentially posting better, better loan growth and asset quality than its peers. Um, as it focuses on high net worth individuals in urban markets and has a conservative credit culture. So that kind of uh, gives insight into why, you know, the bank had such a nice run up. Obviously, analysts saw something in the company that was better than its peers and, uh, you know, targeting more individuals uh, with higher net worth this way, not likely to default. And uh just a conservative credit culture overall as well, right? So um, that's very, very interesting that Bloomberg... <laughs> out of the whole thing, put this right at the end of the $70 billion uh, liquidity uh, to get the push for it. Ultimately, um, you know, the $70 billion, now we get the earnings, let's kind of see uh, how that was tapped into if used any. Uh, we know Jamie Dimon, uh, JP Morgan CEO, was uh, was actually leading the talks to try to help out the bank as well. I mean, Yellen tried to find uh, strategies uh, try to find strategies where, um, you know, the country's different lenders are going to try to create some kind of uh, credit uh, lend lending capacity, uh, which led to about $30 billion of deposits to help out the, uh, to help out the, um, uh, to help out the cause here. So we'll see what came of that. This is all uh, back in March a while ago, but, um, you know, getting that lifeline and keeping FRC afloat. And uh, we can see uh, that happened back over here, and that's exactly when the stock appeared to be bottoming, and then after that, uh, you know, things have really stabilized. So now we take a look to see: uh, is it in further distress, or or is there going to be the lifeline worked, and uh, you know, is it going to work, and uh, are we going to be on the uh, on the upside? Now, if you're wondering where the money went in terms of deposits, you have a bank run. Everybody took their money out. So what did they buy? Did they buy gold? Did they buy other stocks? Did they buy crypto, uh, BTC, uh, anything else like that, right? Where, where does the money go? Well, you know, if you can't deposit in one bank uh, that's not holding up too well, then you put it into, you know, one of the uh, big six or really big bank, right? So Bank of America, obviously noting that there was a huge amount of cash that piled in. Uh, for for the quarter there because again there was a lot of worried about uh, stability and uh, 508 billion that's just a lot of money of course it wasn't just uh, Bank of America all the other uh, big banks did see a large inflow of deposits out from the small regional banks so as that pressure subsides let's take a look to see if the regional banks are able to recover as long as you know there hasn't been further bank runs that have happened and uh, confidence slowly builds back in the system we could see the stock um, ideally again trend back uh, towards the upside but again as i mentioned uh, baby steps let's not have monstrous targets because um Usually when a stock does crash quite a bit, it doesn't just go vertical all the way back, right? So it's a slow pressure up. It's always a slow bull run and a fast, fast, uh, fast roller coaster to the downside, right? So uh, let's take a look. Uh, again, leave me your targets as well about what you guys think. Uh, will FRC take off after earnings? Did everybody get it wrong? And uh, yeah, leave me your thoughts. So lots of discussions about FRC. I have earnings here. Um, that's why I want to hear your input. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.